Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. My name is the editor Martin Kremer, attending Ned Mag's Fuel Cell Electric Vehicle Conference in Cape Town this week. He joins me today to unpack the headlines. Welcome, Martin. Hi, Sashmi. Now, experts believe that fuel cell electric vehicles will make a global entry, a strong global entry, um, in the next decade. You know, we've always been told fuel cells are five years away, and when you go there five years later, they say, no, they're still five years away, and that went on and on and on. They say we're now in that five years, and that commercialization is happening. Okay, so you've still got a period where you've got to bring things down the, uh, the sort of price scale, mm -hmm. because the cost of these vehicles is still not as competitive mm -hmm. as it should be. But people are looking long, and particularly Toyota and Hyundai and Honda, you know, they have really thrown themselves into this, and they're producing these vehicles, and people are buying these vehicles because they want to, because they like the vehicles, and at the same time, you're protecting the environment. The same time, you're also using South African platinum. So it's wonderful that our economy can start benefiting from this climate crisis and the effort in this has been going back many decades where people started with these fuel cells and it just shows you how long it takes but the conviction out there is that you know the battery electric vehicle has got a place but it's not going to occupy mm. everything a big space is going to be occupied by the fuel cell vehicle not only that you know ships need this uh, protecting type of uh, fuel cell environment where you're using hydrogen and you're making sure you don't pollute. So, th so that is also extending to ships. But we see trains in Germany already doing it. We've got um, cars in, in uh, many parts of the world being powered by this. But the big thing is that trucks and buses and trams uh, and heavier vehicles have definitely captured that uh, need for using fuel cells and will in the future. And California is getting help from its government to grow the number of hydrogen refueling stations it has. You know, you have to work from the top down. If there's no policy, you don't get the action. Now, in California, I mean, I was speaking to a Californian consultant in Cape Town, and he said, you know, it was so bad. The uh, pollution in, in, in the areas of uh, the main cities of California was so, was so bad that they had to take steps. So that forced the government to move in and say, look, we're going to clean this air no matter what. And so they would then assist with subsidies and continually monitor. This is the way they continually monitor. You know, once they give you a dollar, they want to see how that dollar spent and they get people, non-government organizations, government organizations all watching you. And then they improve it and they make it even more advantageous. But he, where he is at is in the production of hydrogen. So in that electrolyzer space, they want 100% clean energy. So they're using the sun and the wind to get, well, particularly sun in this case, to, to get that hydrogen out of the electrolyzer. And of course, they be being helped by South African platinum, South African iridium, which is great for us. And then when that comes out, they're feeding it into filling stations. So they take that hydrogen and pipe it to filling stations. And there are already 40 in the area where you, with a fuel cell vehicle or truck, you can go and pull up there and you get your car filled with hydrogen that is absolutely clean and that has been helped by platinum group metals. But then, as you put that into your car, you've got a fuel cell in your car, which is also being helped by platinum and ruthenium and other platinum group metals. So it's a very important development for South Africa. We're right in there in this climate change. And we need now top-down action by the government, because unless you get top-down and sideways action, mm -hmm. we're going to be too slow. The window. Uh, is opened and we had you know the special economic advisor to the presidency at this Cape Town area and you, it's clear that uh, a lot of presentation is being done at presidential level uh, but it also was fairly clear that the final decision hasn't been taken yet but they see that the green economy can present enormous number of opportunities so they're looking at it holistically and, and one of them is this fuel cell area and the electrolyzer area and the PGMs and manufacturing sectors um, are said to be transformed by fuel cell developments. You know, that's the thing. We've got this window. It's not going to be open for that long. But what is beautiful about it, it is, is a synergy between mining and manufacturing. 
So we can really look at doing both here because we've, we've got this enormous amount of platinum and I think that's where the penny needs to drop in South Africa that it's no good just having the platinum here you know possibly the platinum could be anywhere if we've got it here what advantage are we going to get from that if any is that advantage going to come through the fiscus so that because they've been receiving tax money from the mines perhaps they the best to actually then put big incentives in but sitting at that gathering, I mean, with people from the DTI, Department of Science and Technology, and all they were talking about, how many uh, incentives are there available? Come and get these incentives. But it's no good having a big fragmented number of incentives. You've got to have someone at the top directing you saying, you must go for that incentive. You must go for that incentive. And not just leaving this to the private sector. There's just not enough visibility of what is available. And perhaps, you know, some of these need to be brought into one fund just to get this going we need to have these economic development zones. they all really there, mm. most of them. We need to have the legal framework. They say it will be there in two months because we've already, a month has elapsed virtually since the Minister of um, Trade and Industry and Competition promised that it would be three months that there would be some sort of legal et entity for the Platinum Valley. So it's very close. But how are these incentives going to work? Mm. What are the benefits? It's got to be highlighted from the rooftop, and the government has to take the lead. As you say, if they do in California, you know, the thing just moves, and, and you can see the transformation daily within Los Angeles and uh, you know, other big uh, Californian cities. So it's of great importance to us, but how we're going to do this still needs to be worked out, and I think they should try and do it smartly. Thanks for speaking this morning. It's a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter.